what the episode is about, and you could put in those same sorts of reforms here. Make sense? Um, I encourage you to look at it and see some of the stories. Um, okay. Make sense? Any questions? So, more from the same article. This is Timothy McVeigh, who is the Oklahoma City bomber, uh, uh, HSLDA, writing on this. Time Magazine connected this with homeschoolers, Christian homeschoolers. They said, you know, I mean, he even looks like a Christian homeschooler, right? I don't know what a Christian homeschooler looks like, but he's a white guy, and that's dangerous. Um, so the headline, how dangerous are they? And basically, they linked it to right-wing people, gun club people, Patriot Party people, but Christian homeschoolers too. Because what do Christian homeschoolers do? They sit around in gatherings where someone's in front of them talking about how bad the government is. And the government is bad, and I'm telling you it is. No, so they're worried that people are going to get whipped up into a frenzy in these anti-government gatherings and go off and do bad stuff. Right? I'm, not, I'm encouraging you not to do bad stuff. Don't blow up the government, <laughs> except intellectually maybe, but not physically. Um, but anyway, I, again, I, for background to this topic, looking at the uh, Oklahoma City bombing, I think is more valuable than looking at 9-11, or at least it's a good earlier background to see how the government responded. The other interesting thing, and maybe this is in the next slide. Yeah, um, the illusion of justice, this is from Human Rights Watch, Columbia University, I think it just came out. So most of the terrorist attacks in the United States over the last 10 years have had FBI involvement. So like the first uh, World Trade Center bombing, you know, the first time the terrorists, they drove a van load of explosives into the World Trade Center and blew it up. It didn't knock the building down, but it caused a lot of damage. It turns out that the FBI had a guy in that cell. And they just didn't believe him when he said that this guy's going to drive a van and blow it up. I mean, that's, that's not crazy story stuff. It's another problem. You have to separate crazy stories on the internet from real stuff. But the challenge is the FBI wants to find terrorists. How do you find them? Well, you hear that there's a group in Idaho that meets once a month, and they talk about blowing up government buildings. So what do you do? Do you arrest them all for talking about blowing up government buildings? You can't do that. What can you do? Yeah. You, the you send one guy in who's a local guy who is be, befriends them, who shows up, who's helpful, he's there for a time. Yeah. Well, it can be entrapment. You have to get a legal definition of entrapment. But you show up there. Your job is to figure out, are these guys dangerous, or are they just a bunch of guys talking about how much they hate the government? So you show up there, and the subject comes up, and somebody says, I wish I had access to X, you know, some detonator. And so you say, well, I think I could get one of those detonators. I talked to a guy who has one or knows how to get them. And so either the response is, no, no, I'm just, you know, I don't really want to do it, or it says, yeah, well, that's interesting. Maybe I'll do that. And so then they go through the process, and they, you know, they have a sting operation, and you know, you find out whether the guy is serious or not. The challenge is that sometimes those things get out of hand. That's possibly what the Oklahoma City bombing was about as well. But in all these high-profile domestic terrorism plots, the FBI, many of them were actual sting operations. 50% of more than 500 uh, resulted from informant-based cases. 30% were actually sting operations. So I mention this because challenges is you want a set of rules. I mean, we want the FBI to track down people that are going to blow stuff up. But how, how do you do that? When is something entrapment? And when is it just uh, trying to figure out this information? So you, I mean, this is part of what you're going to read about this, how um, you can imagine how, how much stuff there is on the internet with people uh, saying they're going to blow something up. When I look at the comments on almost any moderately controversial topic, there's so many wackos that comment on these things. So how do you decide who's just typing because they're nuts and who isn't? Uh, and so 
Does the federal government do that? How do you do that? You know, what are the rules for that? Yeah. That's right. If you want to understand wackos, you have to have wackos in your department. Um, and it, probably it's a mistake to use that language. Um, I was re I was. Uh, Frank Edelblue is a homeschool. The Edelblues are a homeschool debate family from New Hampshire. Uh, Frank Edelblue is running for Congress or something. And so I was trying to find some information on the internet, and I found a Salon article about somebody at the last New Hampshire election. And the comment in the article, this guy's saying, I was just standing there, and this right wing nut job, Frank Edelblue, walked by. Well, typical language, right wing nut job. So the guy's criticizing Frank, his wife, and everyone else who's a Republican because he's a left-wing nut job. Well, any kind of language like that is bad news. So I shouldn't say, what did I say earlier, wacko or whoever. Using this language is derisive. There are people who are misinformed. There are some people who are dangerous. And it's really hard to tell who's dangerous and who's just talking. And I don't know a good answer for that. Um, we can look back to the founding fathers, to the George Washington administration, the Washington administration. How did they respond to uh, the French Revolution in America? What was the response by the government? Yeah. They, they were like, we're not getting involved in this. They're not directly involved, but how did they, did they see it as a risk to have these French, all the French, many of the Frenchmen in the US were talking about how great the revolution was and that the American Revolution only went part way. The aristocrats were still in charge. So the federal government passes the Alien and Sedition Act. They basically throw people in jail who are writing letters or criticizing the government or publishing newspapers. It was, I mean, I encourage you to look at them. <laughs> We're only like a few years into the entire country, and, and the first thing we do is violate freedom of speech and freedom of the press, throw people in jail because they were afraid that the French, which is, again, a much bigger country at the time, the French Revolution would somehow roll into America and bring that uh, 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 chaos uh, to the U.S. Yeah. Once that act was passed, did the amount of letters that were actually on the topic uh, increase? Good question. I don't know. I know they were searching letters, and they were arresting people uh, who they thought a threat to the country. Uh, and that could be just saying, you know, it's, it's, it's bizarre to read about it. And remember, it's a long time ago, 18th century. People had different ideas, and we'd just, just been founded. And, uh, but still, it's a, it's a pretty brazen uh, uh, interference with people's rights justified by the fear of revolution. We had this again. I mean, again, every war, we had this in World War I. People critical of World War I were thrown in jail. Samuel Gompers, the head of the International Labor Organization, argued that Wilson should not have put the U.S. into war. He published on this. It went through the post office. It was considered, uh, I don't know if it's espionage, considered, anyway, he got thrown in jail. And he stayed in jail. So there were people arrested for tax protests who were against the war all across the country. So World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, you always have protests. What did uh, Henry David Thoreau do about the, was it the Spanish-American War? I encourage you to read Civil Disobedience the famous, famous essay by Thoreau. But basically, he refused to pay taxes for the war. He felt the war was unjust, un-American, and so they threw him in jail. And it wasn't a bad jail, and he was only there for a day, but it was long enough to write a famous essay. OK. Um, so yeah, you really got the broad question. When the government has an enemy, how do you respond to it? How uh, the government's prosecuting a war or a police action, and people object. Uh, that's what electronic surveillance is going to be monitoring to try and you know, monitor potential enemies of the state. And I don't know any group that's more anti-government or skeptical government than Christian homeschoolers, and articulately so. You, you not only complain about government, you research it, and you give presentations. And so um, you can expect to be monitored. So any questions? Take a break for a few minutes.